for this class. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday at home. Uh, it's nice to see you all. Gosh, it's been since what, Wednesday? Since I've seen you guys? That is a long time to be out of class. I don't like it so much. So I, I like seeing you. I get to see you this week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think, this week, right? You guys have more of a full week. So um, I had a good weekend with the weather. It was just so just amazing. I love that sun. I love the warmth. It just really makes me feel good. And then I was teaching first hour today and I looked out and it was dark and raining really hard. And I was like, oh my gosh. So my quote for the week is to think about other people. I want you to think about even though you might think you know their story, no one's day is what you think it is because they are probably putting some stuff inside of them that you might not know. So as I come to you today and just being like, hey, how was your day? It appears everything's fine. My life is doing okay, but you just never know. You don't know. And so give other people some love at home. Give some people some love today, even though you might not think they need love. Everybody needs to feel that love. I love it, Courtney. Spread that love. Um, today, I would like to take a few minutes to kind of bring you back a little bit. It just because it's been so long. I I think it's vitally important with teaching um, half the time with you guys and half the time with the other students. We have to take those first five-ish minutes to kind of bring you back um, and then ask you any questions that you might need. I kept everything on the board in case you couldn't see anything. Um, and I'm going to go over it really, really, really quickly. But if you didn't have an opportunity, go ahead and fill the the board out. This was left from seventh hour on Friday. And then I will just briefly read these out loud to you. I'm just going to give you a second to just make sure you have everything in the right spot. Try to pause here a little bit. Be patient. I'm talking to myself. Being patient with you all. Somebody, anybody find me to love. So as we look at a couple things, I just want to point out to make sure you guys actually have this written down. Make sure you write down the limbic system next to number nine, hypothalamus, number 10, your hippocampus, and number 11, your amygdala. If you guys can recall your free response, this is a possibility is one of those words from the limbic system. Speaking of free response, your essay and multiple choice, I'm looking this way because you're behind the box there, Court. Your essay and multiple choice test is next week. So just this week it's content, and then Monday you'll do your essay test, and Wednesday you'll do your multiple choice test. I'll remind you again as the week goes on. The limbic system, what are we talking about? Make sure you just note that that's part of the emotional center. Uh, our deep-seated, most important emotions. So if this is a lateral view of the brain, your limbic system is way, way down, totally in the interior part of that brain. Over here, I kept the functions up for you guys. I'll just read them briefly in case you didn't understand what I was saying or um, maybe some of the words. Cerebral cortex helps control and process everything. It's literally divided into those four areas that we're going to be talking about today with the lobes. Corpus callosum is the connection of the two hemispheres from side to side. The hypothalamus, the way I teach it, is the four Fs. Food, fight, flight, and fornication, which is your sexual drive. It also regulates your pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is your master gland. It controls the other glands. The thalamus, goofy enough, but a professor of mine taught me this, and I just, I've always stuck with me because it's probably because it's so stupid. 
thou must deliver messages. Thou must. It's just kind of a weird way to divide up the word. And you might say, well, what message are you delivering? All messages except smell go through the thalamus. Make sure you note that. So every one of our senses goes through the thalamus and then gets rerouted to where the appropriate spot of where it needs to go. Hippocampus, I underline the word campus because I wanted you to remember when you're on a college campus, you should not only be creating memories of your social life, but you should be creating memories within the academic world. Cerebellum, balance and coordination. Amygdala, emotions, primarily fear and anger. Reticular formation, the other word that it's also known for is reticular activating system, the RAS, and depending upon what tests you take, it might say reticular activating system. So just make sure you note that. And the easy way to remember that is think about rise and shine, R-A-S, rise and shine. So how alert are you? Um, first hour today, I had a student who looked super tired and sleepy, and her eyes were getting pretty droopy, and I said, your RAS is not working very good right now. It's just your alertness, as well as you, Brian. You're getting yawning over there. Your medulla, breath, all your major life support functions, pons, relaxation, and dreaming. That's what we went over on Friday. Um, and in some classes, I think, I believe we ran out of time. So it's good for you guys to see that again as well. Boy, I can see my bruise really forming on the video. <laughs> you see it? Huh. Well, I can see it. Does anyone have any questions about any of this? Anybody need anything repeated or clarified or anything? This will be up all class, yeah. Any, I don't have anything on that one. You're good to keep that one blank. There is some things, but not necessary for us to know. Anything else? I'd like to just make sure I remind you about your homework. Tonight you guys have a homework assignment and it's on campus. Well, first you have a reading. Everybody, we always have our readings. And then what I want everybody to do, those of you at home as well as those of you in school today, I need you guys to do the plasticity assignment that's on Canvas and it, there's a link for today. So just click that on. There are two videos I'd like you to watch. Um, they're not very long and they're just, they're, I think they're kind of interesting because they're talking about the brain and having damages in the brain. And then there are some questions I want you to submit on Canvas after you watch those, um, or answers I'd like you to submit. So thought, questions, um, we'll go over the term plasticity tomorrow when you guys are in school. We're going to do a demonstration with that. And um, then when you guys come back on Wednesday, we'll kind of recount what we did in class. Does anyone have any questions? So it's a reading as well as the Canvas assignment. Okay. So today we are going to go through learning target F. What are the functions of the various cerebral cortex regions? Your assignment was to uh, take a lobe or an area of the brain and you each got two, I believe. Am I correct about that? Were each of you assigned two? That must have been in a later class. So no worries. I, Brian is looking at me like, are you crazy? So we missed... Um, as the day went on on Friday, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to start assigning people to to do so that we can actually have more people participate. But that's okay. We can make it work with just you guys. Uh, you guys are going to stand up here. Who are my first two people? I guess it would be frontal lobe and temporal lobe. Who are you? And what are you? I have the temporal lobe. Okay. And who's frontal lobe? Anyone? Okay. So what about motor cortex and Wernicke? You're, both of the two of you have that one. Somatosensory and Broca? I have that You have which one? Uh, and what about Broca? Uh, that was you. Okay, occipital and parietal? And we didn't have Courtney, which one were you? Were you not assigned one? Were you here on Friday, Toots? Um, <laughs> I think. So I would have assigned you one. Do you guys remember? I, I, was assigned one, but I didn't complete it. Okay. So. Would I be able to complete it very quickly? I don't know. You can maybe. Uh, which one? Are, your somatosensory? 
So we have nobody for occipital or parietal, right? And then we don't have anybody for frontal. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, uh, it'll be a quick little showdown, but we'll make it work. Uh, two people are gonna stand up here. You wanna talk clearly. Uh, if you feel like people can't hear you because you're masked, pull that down just for a temporary period of time, or better yet, just expand your, your vocal cords. You're gonna get 30 seconds to tell us what your part does. So you're not gonna talk about the other part at that point. So if I was assigned, let's say the cerebellum, I would say, this is what the responsibility of the cerebellum does. It does this, it does this, it does this. It helps you do this, it helps you do this. Anything you can say about the cerebellum or whatever part you were assigned. Then this person's gonna do the same thing for 30 seconds. And then after the one minute, the two of you will go back and forth. You get a smack down. You get to decide what is the biggest I don't know, come back you have to that person to say my part is better than yours and here's the reason why. And so it's really important if you have the ability to go on the fly, to go off of what they say, not just do your script, but be able to, you know, like um, first hour somebody said something about like jumping off a cliff or something like that. And they were talking about their part and how you have the ability to do that. And the other person like took that statement and went off of it in more of a debate style fashion. Okay. So Court, you're going to do frontal lobe for us. Okay. So you might need to look up some information about the frontal lobe. We'll come back to the frontal lobe real quick. You're not going to have a whole lot of time to get that together. So we'll start with the motor and the Wernicke's area. Does anybody have any questions? Oh. And then you guys, uh, that's a good question. You're not going to do anything but listen. And then when the, we're all done chit-chatting about which part we will go over, OK, this is what the function is of these parts. Sounds good? OK. All right. I'm going to grab my phone. I need the Tama. You do have to stand up there. You definitely can. It's very informal. If you are speaking, you should have this around, just holding it. You don't have to put it around your neck. But you should have this so that people can hear you. Here's the microphone right here. Don't touch these buttons. So hold it at the bottom. And then you can just speak into it like this. Make sense? All right. Who would like to go first? Um, Who? You decide. <laughs> You're really soft. I love it. Rock, paper, scissors. I can do it. All right. Okay. Give me a second to sit down. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this. This. I don't really know what mine does. This. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go. I feel like we're all crammed over here. I'm all set right here. Okay, mine is the Wernix area, and it kind of has to do with like understanding and comprehending stuff, especially the languages. So like if it's damaged, it's not really like you won't really be able to comprehend like anything at all. Like if you look at something, you just like say gibberish, like you'd be able to like say words, but they wouldn't really mean anything. And that's about it. <laughs> You've got eight seconds. Just let it go. <laughs> Three. Two, one. Thank you very much. 30 seconds. And now it's your part to what you are. So the microphone is at the very top. You see the this little part? Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, go. Okay, I have the motor cortex and it's for planning, control, and voluntary movements. So, uh, like any movement you could make with your body, I guess. Pretty self explanatory. But, um, if it's damaged, obviously you're going to have some issues moving yourself. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's self-explanatory. <laughs> Three, 
two, one. All right. One, who was ever talking, you'll just pass that back and forth. You have one minute. Whoever wants to start it, that's it. You can interrupt each other. You can give whatever smackdown you want to say why yours one is minute. better than theirs. Ready? Go. I think mine's probably better just because, like, if you're damaged, like, if that's damaged, you won't really be able to like understand anything so it won't really have like any like, meaning to life at all if you can't understand like anything <laughs> um but maybe it's if mine is damaged if the motor cortex is damaged like you you'll feel like you don't really have a whole bunch of meaning either because you can't like do simple functions or like you can't be like you use your muscles to like eat and to drink and to move your eyes and to walk and stuff so if you can't do all of that then you would feel like just like you're sitting there and doing nothing but i think there's still like it kind of depends like what part gets paralyzed when you like when that gets damaged and also like humans are really social and like if you can't really understand what like what happens anymore i feel like you know that kind of get depressed humans <laughs> okay, time's up. Flip and turn to the, uh, face the board. You guys just backs to us. Yes, we're gonna vote. Who do we feel, I'll take it. Who do we feel had the best, I wish you guys could vote at home, I probably could do something like that, but who was the best debater, who had the best argument as to why their brain part was better? On the right we have what part, guys? This is Fernicke's area. And on the left, we have what part? Motor the motor cortex. Ready, Court? Hands up if you feel Wernicke area. You guys don't look. Wernicke area was a better argument. Wait, Wernicke area or what? Motor. motor. Hands up if you thought motor cortex was the better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for participating, both of you. But there can only be one winner in today's first round, and it happened to be our Wernicke's area. And it's actually pronounced with a V. So nice job, guys. Take a seat. Woo-hoo! Now Courtney's doing this on the fly, so she's gonna do, give us the best shot that she can, which is one of the reasons why I like Courtney so much, because she just was like, let's just do it. She's gonna go against Anne, and Anne, you guys are going to have the same format. Who would like to go first? Does that matter? I'll give it to you, Anne. Okay. Uh, so I'm don't hold touch this back to scare. Yeah, don't touch the buttons and everything okay. else is good. Wait till I get set, Anne. Is this intimidating? If it was bigger, it would be. Don't forget to tell us what your part is, guys. Okay, ready, go. Um, I have the temporal lobe, and it basically controls like um, the recognition of auditory stimuli, understanding written and verbal material. So, like, if someone's talking to you, if you're reading something, how well you comprehend it, and then perception of faces and memory. So, like, just so that you can recognize people that you're talking to, people that you've seen in the past, or like, kind of recognize them if you've seen them a few times, and then, like remembering what's happened in the past, remembering like... Time. Sorry. No, okay. you're fine. Um, I have the frontal lobe, and it's involved in speaking and muscle movements and like making plans and judgments. So like making plans for your actions, I guess, could be included. It probably has to do with like impulsivity. And then it includes motor cortex like the one that one of them had motor cortex for theirs it's that is within the frontal lobe and that's controls huh? voluntary movements all right guys you have one minute smack her down ready go um i think my lobe is better just because like you said, that without yours, like you, yours controls like movements and stuff like that. But without like learning it and mem remembering how to do it, we wouldn't be able to do it in the first place. Um, I don't know. Mine doesn't talk much about memory, but it talks about making plans and judgments. 
So I'd say that if you are able to make plans and judgments, you can remember some things. In like voluntary movements, those are like movements you have to remember. Um, you have to be able to control when you're moving and what you're moving and like what you're saying and stuff, which is in the frontal lobe. So I'd say it's really important. <laughs> but Anne, um, you have to like rem you have to like be able to perceive other people's faces time, if you want to make plans. Time, time, flip, ladies, flip and face that board. All right. Here we go, guys. This side of the room was? Temporal. Thank you. And? Frontal. frontal. Hands up for temporal, please. Hands up for frontal, please. Thank you very much. Our second winner from this round would be frontal lobe. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our final two contestants on this first round. Mm -hmm. What are you, Mr. Nick? I am the somatosensory cortex. Don't start yet. I will be broke as area. Elena, do you mind timing for so us? Turn it off, Brian. 30 seconds. See the power button. Uh-huh. This is hucking out the hallway. Yeah. Okay, we're ready. Okay, three, two, one, debate. All right, so my brain structure is the site that measures touch, pressure, temperature, and pain in the cerebral cortex. It is awareness and associated with bodily movement and like your positioning. And it processes info from all over your body. You still got a lot of time. Oh, I still got a lot of time? Yeah. Well, that's just, well, that's all I got, I'm done. <laughs> Just stand around. Hello, everybody. I'm the Broca area. Broca's area is so darn important. It's only in that left hemisphere. That's why it's called the dominant hemisphere. It is giving me the ability to speak right now, to shout, to say I love you to my husband, to say I hate you to my dog. It gives me the ability to do anything that we want with our words. Broca, broca, broca is so important. Okay. All right. Well, first off, all right, you like, if you're this damage, it's just going to like, you're going to talk a little bit slower, you know what I mean? You're just not going to be able to spit it out as fast. But like mine, if it's damaged, like, I could be on fire and I'm not even knowing it. Like, for real. I could die. Also, like, I could just like walk out in the street because I've got no clue where my body's gone. Just like dip right out in the street and die. Yeah, but you know what I would say to that? If you don't have the ability to communicate, you'd be fine. How? How am I going to communicate? You just you don't just, you just speak. You just, you just get it for yourself. So uh, I would not. Yeah, you just you just go rob the place instead of talking to people. To speak <laughs> because you couldn't un. Yeah, yeah, you'd be all right. See, you'd be all right. You could still get food. <laughs> if mine, like, I could, like, I could How be do like. I tell people I want food. Like, you, you, you just go do it. You don't tell people. Stop, stop, stop. Very good. Nice job, buddy. Okay, we will not vote on that one because the automatic winner has to be my student. That goes on. Nice job, Nick. We will be going on to the next round. The winner, which would be the frontal lobe, is going to go up against, was it Wernicke's area, right? Okay, so the two of you. Now, what's different about this round is we only do a minute. We won't, like, repeat what the part does. Make sense? Yes? Sure. So we don't repeat? So you're not going to do a 30-second interview. You're just going to go right into the smackdown. Yes, because we already did that. Okay, so you guys grab the microphone. Come on up. Say something in opposition to your opponent. You're smacking down against Brian. The 
is the vertici area. You can do it. Get there and argue with them why yours is better than his. What if I don't? They can't be mad. It's each kind of each kind. All I gotta do is say his bad. <laughs> Just say it over and over again. Ready? Okay. Ready? Go. Like if frontal lobes damage, you know, you can still like talk electronically, because like you can't be able to talk like with your mouth anymore. Like if it's kind of not working anymore, but like there's like still tons of ways that you can talk, like you know, um, Stephen Hawking stuff like that. But like if you have like damage in the Ver Wernicke's area, then you just won't be able to understand anything you say at all. Or look at what anyone says. Okay, well, for the frontal lobe, it includes the motor cortex, which controls voluntary movements. So, no, you wouldn't be able to communicate because I feel like communicating is definitely a voluntary movement. Like, you have to choose to speak, and you wouldn't be able to speak with your mouth or make any muscle movements or plans and judgments about the people that you are meeting and making relationships with day to day. Well, I think that's still only if, you know, that's their part it's damaged. Because was there, wasn't there like this thing we saw in the book where like with someone's like whole head got crushed by a like pillar and he was still fine, still be able to talk fine, stuff so like I'm that. Turn around. One person will be moving on to our final round with Nick. Why are we Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we think, guys? This side of the room is whom? Vernikes. Yeah, and? Frontal. frontal. Raise your hand if you think Vernikes. Raise your hand if you think frontal. Thank you very much. Court, you gave it a good run. You did, but our winner is Vernikes area. Stay up there, Mr. Brian. You and Nick. Last, thank you for being very impromptu. Which one are you? Don't worry about it. Grab the microphone. I don't have information about you. Oh, that's a good one. This is going to be going on. You're going to have to just like wing it here. Ready? Set? Go. All right, Brian, why mine's more important is because, like, you could be, like, making eggs, right? You got an open burner. And since I have, like, if my, my, if my somatosensory cortex was damaged and I have no perception of where my body is, I, like, I'm, like, wandering over towards the burner, right? And I just put my hand on an open burner. And since my somatosensory cortex is damaged, I'm not feeling the pain. And I'm just torturing my arm over there. Well, like, you wouldn't really even be making those eggs if your Wernicke area is damaged because, like, you can't even comprehend what's happening. <laughs> so I don't think you'd be making eggs anytime soon. Yeah, man, but, like, <laughs> I'd have to go to the hospital because my arm was all torched because I've, like, I can't, like, I can't feel the temperature, I can't feel the pain, and I got no clue what my body's doing. Yeah, and you'd still be fine because you won't be hurting and you're not going to the hospital now and getting healed. <laughs> Me? <laughs> but like Wernicke there, you know, if that's damaged, you still just no like no like value of life at all. But with you, like that's kind of cool. Can't feel pain. Just but but you can <laughs> die, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our last vote. Who won this round? Give me the thing. We have Wernicke's area, and we have what was this one? Somatosensory cortex, that's right. Okay, Vernicke's area, hands up. Somatosensory cortex, hands up. All right, turn around. It was not unanimous, just so you know. But our winner of our final SmackDown today was da -da -da -da, Mr. <laughs> Vernicke's area. Round of applause for everybody. Thank you very much. You guys, I need you to rip out or cut out that assignment and put it in our center pod so that I can give you guys some points. For those of you at home, if you were a virtual day student, you did not need to do that for your assignment that is not being graded for you. You guys did the superhero assignment. 
um, at home, or you did that in class on Friday. So that replaces this assignment. So nice job, everybody. Let's go ahead, you guys, if you could just put them in the center aisle. We are going to go over the functions of those parts of the brain. Don't forget to make sure your name is on them. And I'm going to help you fill those out. So we'll start at the very top. I'm going to make some sidetracks. And I want to show you a couple of videos along the way, too, regarding some of the actual uh, terms that we're going to go over. The frontal lobe is extremely, extremely important. In the past, I think I've told you guys on another day, we talked about this, that the frontal lobe actually doesn't develop completely until about the age of 18-ish for women and 25 roughly, give or take, for men. Why is that important? Because here are the major functions of the frontal lobe, and go ahead and write these down. What's that? You just don't, they don't have the full functioning of it. So judgment, judgment, number one, judgment, planning. So think about yourself as a man or a woman. Do you have better reasoning skills than the opposite sex if you are a female? Uh, concentration is another one. Decision making is another one. And finally, your personality. Literally, you guys, this is called the gatekeeper. The frontal lobe is called the gatekeeper because of all of those major things. In addition, you should note that two of the bottom areas are located in this frontal lobe, as was mentioned by Courtney. One is the motor cortex is located in the frontal lobe. So without the frontal lobe, you can't have a motor cortex because it lies right on top of it. It's a strip. So we have these two, we have these, yeah, we, these two strips. You can see them at home, green and yellow. And these are your motor cortex and your somatosensory cortex. And that's what's lying on top of that. So the first one would be your motor cortex. And then the second thing that's held in or housed in the frontal lobe is Broca's area. And we're going to talk about those in just a second. I want to take just a quick pit stop. You may have heard this before from anatomy classes, from a different course. Maybe if you guys are med students um, taking some CNA classes or anything like that. But there was a name. There was a man by the name of Phineas Gage, and this is what he looks like here. This is one of the most rare pictures of him ever found. And believe it or not, this photo was actually found accidentally in somebody's attic when they were cleaning out the attic. And it was like an old house. And this person was like, this kind of looks like a really important picture. And they sent it in. And somebody was like, that's a picture of Phineas Gage and through evaluation. So what happened to this man? He was about 25 years old. He was working on um, a railroad in Connecticut and an explosion came and happened. And what happened was the tamping iron, the iron rod, went entered through his left cheek and exited the left side of his, his head. And you can see the picture of his skull when they actually reenacted it to show you what this would look like but I'll keep them up there and you guys can see the rod itself was really big I put the dimensions down three foot by seven inches and roughly 13 pounds that thing shot up and out instantly it didn't stay and he was conscious the whole flipping time <laughs> can you believe that even when they put him in the cart to take him to the doctor the horse and buggy cart. He remained consciousness. The big, why this is such a big deal, because in this time frame in 1848, we had no brain imaging techniques. Uh, on Wednesday, when you guys come back to school, we're gonna actually talk about different brain imaging techniques like fMRIs, MRIs, PET scans, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't have any of that. They had what was called phrenology. So what they did was they literally just felt the bumps on your head and they're like, oh, I guess this is, this is the reason for this. I guess this might do this. And they were totally guessing. But what happened after this accident was a dramatic change in his personality. And it was the first time neuroscience, if you do any form of neuroscience, this is like neuroscience super elementary, but it was the first time in the history 
of the brain, studying the brain, where we realized your personality is strongly impacted by that frontal lobe. He went from being a really docile, quiet, calm man and easy to work with to somebody very hostile, angry, full of aggression, full of like he had a temper like you couldn't believe, swearing like a sailor. And in fact, the railroad actually had to let him go when he was Phineas Gage. I have his name written on the board. He died in 1860, but he didn't work much longer after the accident on the railroad because they just couldn't stand working with him. So that was the story of how our frontal lobe first came to be where we're like, you know what, it does more than just these bumps on the head. All right, number two, parietal lobe, perception, spatial awareness. Perception and spatial awareness for parietal lobe, making sense of the world. So when I say, what was your perception of the sunny day that you had? Not what you did, but how did you perceive that day? That's what we're talking about with parietal lobe, making sense of your world. Uh, spatial awareness, that's a big one. So the ability to, um, when I sit down, understanding I don't have to look to see where this chair is to know I can sit and I'm gonna be touching that chair real soon. Spatial awareness. It's also in charge of math. It helps you do your math and spelling, oddly enough. So what's located on the parietal lobe? It's that second strip I was telling you guys about, the somatosensory cortex, okay? So that second strip going back there is very, very important. So that makes sense when we're talking about spatial awareness. Temporal lobe, first and foremost, auditory or sound. It allows you to hear. This is where Wernicke's area is located, but only on the left side. It's in the temporal lobe. It allows you to understand language. It allows you to hear things that aren't even there. What do I mean by that? Your Not delusions or hallucinations. Like your, uh, I don't know, like sentences you speak. Mm-hmm, yeah. Anybody ever have those voices going on inside your head and we're, you know, we're just talking to yourself? really don't do that. Some people might not, but maybe everybody does more of like singing a song inside your head. You might just all of a sudden it come to you, you know, and you're hearing it, but you're not hearing it, right? So you're hearing it inside your head, but you're not hearing it externally. A sip of the lobe is sight. That one's easy. Located where on the brain? Your book talked about this. Where's our occipital lobe going to be? Back here. Back here. And that's why if you get a concussion and you hit your head, you do. Does anybody ever, my grandfather used to say this is like an old saying, um, before concussions were known of what they were. You know, I know what they used to call it for football players if you had a con concussion. You get your bell rung. You know why they say that? Is because you're going to start to see some stars, like literally the flickering of the lights, <laughs> and those lights aren't flickering. So literally what's happening is the connections in the occipital lobe, when you hit your brain so hard and you go down, it's going to make those connections go that don't even exist, and sometimes you'll see those, those little stars. Next, motor cortex. So it allows your body to move, as was stated um, earlier during our debate. Left moves your right, right moves your left. So the left hemisphere motor cortex moves the right side of your body. The right motor cortex moves the left side of my body. Somatosensory cortex is responsible for touch and feelings, but not feelings so much of the heart, it's feelings of touch. So I can feel the weight of this, I can feel the texture of this, I can feel the um, pressure 
of maybe when I sit down and just the chair on my leg, those types of feelings that we're talking about. That's your somatosensory cortex. That cortex is divided up into areas that are more sensitive than others. So if you have a super sensitive, and I talked to you guys about this before, if you have a super sensitive area on your body that's really um, key to sensations, like lips, remember when I was talking to you guys about that? That has a bigger area devoted on the, the strip than something like my thigh would, okay? Next two are very, very important. Those are our language areas. A lot of students mix these up on a test, so I wanna take a second to, to go through that a little bit more than just telling you. I'm just watching my time right now. I don't have a whole lot of time, but Broca's area, it's your ability to speak, to speak the spoken word. I also want you guys to write down both of these are located only in the left side of our brain. Language left, that's how you can remember it, LL. So the ability to speak, Wernicke's area, left side of the brain as well, its ability to comprehend what has been said to you and to make sense out of what you're saying. Now there is a word I want you to write down that you guys should as well know. My board is getting very, very large and it's aphasia. A-P-H-A-S-I-A. -A. You can get Broca's aphasia or Wernicke's aphasia, either one of those. And we need to know both of those. What happens if they're injured? So that's an injury to those language areas. So if I say to you a sentence, let's say Nick has Broca's aphasia, Nick and Ann, you both do. And I say to you a sentence, tell me what you do with a cigarette. You would be able to say, right now you would say what? Throw it in the trash. Okay, <laughs> throw it in the trash, right? Um, I mean, you could say a lot of different things, right? All right. If you had Broca's aphasia, first of all, you would be aware that you're speaking like this, and that's an important component. Like, I would be aware I'm talking not coherently, which is a struggle. Many stroke victims get this, okay? So they would answer it like this. Broke, uh, uh, long pause, sig, ret, pause, smoke, pause, it. Would you be able to eventually understand what they're trying to say? You would, it's just broken severely, okay? I'm still aware I'm talking like this, it's super frustrating. What do many stroke victims start doing? People that suffer from Broca's aphasia start, start, stop talking, because they are so embarrassed. You know, it's, 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 it's sad to see that because you're fully aware and you know what you want to say. You just can't get it out. Yeah. Is that impacted by there? I would think, but I, I, I don't think it's a, it's not a hundred percent in the Broca's area. Don't know that one. Wernicke's area, the rest of you have Wernicke's aphasia. And this is what you would sound like. First of all, you're unaware you're talking like this. So you guys are aware you're speaking slowly. You guys have no idea you're sounding like this for, for Wernicke's aphasia. Mm -hmm. This is something you might say. This is a segment of a payment. Soap is a cigarette. I would sound fluid, completely words that you understand, but none of them put together correctly. Do you see the difference? So I'm thinking I'm sounding normal as I'm talking to you. And you're like, what the heck did she just say? That, I mean, you understood what I said, but you're like, that doesn't make any sense. See the difference between the two? I wanna share with you, and I know the bell is getting close, but I think it's pretty interesting to see this in action. Wernicke's aphasia, listen to the woman and the questions being asked. Oh, no. Okay, yes or no. Is your name Smith? Where, what are they? What type of people? I don't know. 
Is your name Brown? Oh, Mrs. Crane, I'm looking at working or things like this, they mean it for me. Okay. Just say yes or no. Okay. Is your name Brown? Well, it is here, and let me see, I just don't know. No, I'm not going to eat any fine. No. Get it? How about Broca's area? This young girl was in English class and she suffered a stroke. Um, Scott. Oh, no. Sarah Scott. That's right. And how old are you? I can't. Try. How old are you? I can't. You're 19. Nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened to you? Um, stroke. Um, Choppy sentences. And English class. Okay. And I um book and I read it aloud. Um. But so she's not chopping her sentences because she's struggling with the actual action of English. She speaks English well. It's the fact she can't put the things together anymore. It is. And if you guys ever encounter an elderly person, maybe your parents someday, unfortunately, this happened to me. Mother comes up to me and starts talking in, like, she's breaking it up. And, I'm, and she normally talks normal. And I'm like, Mom, she was, she was experiencing a stroke. Get in the car immediately. Do not wait. Don't like sit and give him water or anything like that. You get him to the hospital because time is of the essence when people have strokes. Have a great day. Thanks, you guys, for participating. You did a great job. It's a small class, so I like that we can improvise a little bit. Bye, everybody at home. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll be working on plasticity tomorrow. Bye-bye.